hurricane headed towards South Carolina. So uh, it so looks like the points uh, coming in around a little north of uh, Myrtle Beach. So, so at the present, so uh, we need to be in prayer for folks in the in the uh, path of the hurricane. I don't even remember the name of that one. They several coming. Florence. There's two more behind them. There's one going this way, and there's one going this way, coming in through uh, Dominican Republic and toward Cuba and that way, and then the one coming into South Carolina. So. Um, it's that time of the year, so we we'll just pray and hopefully we'll be blessed this year and miss all that and pray for those who will be possibly in the storms. Uh, today uh, is a special day that uh, we've set aside, and I'm very honored to do this. I've always, wherever I served, unless I was the associate, and I think we had... I'm not sure we did there, but uh, that was the senior pastor's job. But uh, I've always had uh, Gideon Sunday, and uh, I believe in what they do and uh, and and the ministry that they uh, share, not only locally and but around the world. And so we have a, a speaker with us today. Later on, uh, Mr. Jimmy Allen will be uh, introducing our speaker. You can see his name there, but I won't go into any details. But I would like to uh, recognize our Gideons. If anybody's a Gideon or has served as a Gideon before, would you please stand? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. We appreciate you very much. There are there are missionaries uh, that uh, serve and and uh, share the word around the world. Um, the announcements that follow is a witness team meeting, and that is for anybody that's interested in helping us plan and discuss things about the revival coming up. Doesn't mean you'll have to preach the revival. We got that taken care of. You don't have to sing. I think we've got that taken care of. We're just going to discuss things like meals and prayer time and, and stuff like that, okay? So uh, if you would like to participate, we'd love for you to come back in the banquet room at two o'clock and uh, we'll be meeting there it shouldn't be a very long meeting at all and so uh, please come and, and uh, help us out as we work together to do that Chelsea will be um, presiding over that meeting um, Heart, Young of Heart luncheon September the 18th make sure you have that on your calendar so don't forget that. Tomorrow evening at 545, you should have received a card if you're on the PPR. Um, and we'll be meeting at 545 in the parlor to begin to discuss uh, upcoming uh, new salaries for next year. And uh, uh, so that will be the, the topic of the meeting and anything else that they need to uh, bring up. So please, please come out to that meeting. Then following uh, at 6.30, in the Trinity classroom, I guess that was just in case. Uh, we might we might stay in the parlor, but that's okay. You'll see us close by. We'll have a, uh, a promise no more than one hour. If we have to go over, we'll have to uh, do another meeting. So uh, um, 6.30 to 7.30 will be our nominations committee. And you should have gotten a card with that too, correct, Miranda? Yes. Yes. And it's very important that we meet together and begin to uh, to uh, discuss our leaders for this next year. The uh, United Methodist Women's Meeting, what is this? Uh, the district meeting, is this what this is? Dolores? Yes. yes. Uh, Trinity and Waycross, you can uh, talk to Dolores and uh, get information on that. Don't forget our Wednesday's prayer time, 7.30 and 12. Choir practice at 6, 7.15, handbell. And uh, uh, 
I know Miss Debbie didn't really expect this, but we spelled the, the last name wrong, so we got it right. So you'll have a, a special collector's in the right way, but uh, we still celebrate uh, praise and, and continued prayer for little Allie Di Deanna. Deanna or Diana? Diana Lawford, is that correct? Okay. And for Brian and Jenna Lawford as well. So uh, keep them in your prayers. They are at home, and uh, that's a praise, and so we celebrate that with them as well. Okay. Uh, this afternoon, somebody give me help me with the time. There are some folks that will be... Uh, um, they're calling it marching, I guess. It's marching uh, um, in remembrance of 9-11 and also meeting at the courthouse annex to uh, read the, the Bible. So if you're interested in that, anybody know the time? I think some of it starts at 3. Um, but... Uh, I know it was in the paper, but I just want to let you know there are some folks that's doing that today, and that was done by uh, a young lady, I don't remember her name either, Rebecca, that uh, out of the, the memory and remembrance and the, uh, prayer and et cetera for the 9-11 that's coming up. Okay? Any other announcements? Any other thing anybody would like to re speak about today? Yes? Some more help. We need some more help. <clears throat> Doing Christmas. More help with Christmas. Yes. Guess what? Chris, Christmas will be here in, uh, this is September, October, October, November, November. Three months. Chelsea knows. <laughs> she knows. Three months. Yes. Okay, choir's at 5.30, not 6, this week. Okay, any other announcements? I tell you what, and I know he's fanning back there, and he don't like to be called out, but I just want you, if you can't see it from back there, when we start passing the piece, come look at this flower arrangement. It's simple but gorgeous. Uh, thank you, Michael. It is beautiful. Thank you, brother. Appreciate that. Would you stand and greet one another in the name of the Lord?
Let us now prepare our hearts for worship as we listen to the chiming of the hour, the prelude, and we'll open with prayer. Let us pray. Oh God, we come this morning giving you praise, glory, and honor. We thank you, Lord, for your word and the, the power in your word that speaks to our spirits, to our hearts. Lord, we pray that today that we would understand that your word is divine and that it brings healing and strength and salvation to all. We pray, God, that as we worship you today, that we don't try to get ahead, that we don't try to, to move too fast, but that we seize every opportunity to be in worship with you today. Come, Holy Spirit, speak to us through song, through prayer, through word, through our speaker today, and that you would bless it all and receive all praise, glory, and honor. For it's in the name of Jesus we make this prayer. Amen. Our opening hymn of worship this morning is found on page 400. In your hymn, please stand as we lift our voices and praise unto the Lord. Mm -hmm.
please remain standing as we declare our faith and belief in God Almighty and His only Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, as we say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the mother of Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from whom he is to come to us to the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of everlasting. Amen. me a special guest to come up here to help me with uh, today's lesson, Miss Shirley. Miss Shirley, if you would uh, step right into that room for me. Uh, in trouble. Okay, today's lesson is about missionaries. So Miss Shirley is our person who doesn't know anything that God loves her okay so when she comes back that's what we're going to end up making sure we help her understand that God loves her okay so if she's in that room how is she going to know if God loves her or not she's not she's not right so how can we help her know that God loves her I hear somebody giving us a hint. We got to tell her. So if we sit sit down and don't speak to our neighbors and make sure that they know, and even our family members and uh, people from abroad. So there's mis missionaries have all kinds of different work. Some of it's local, and some people go to different countries to talk to, to um, people about missionaries. And this is what the Bible t talks to us about missionaries in Matthew. 28, 19 through 20. I have to get my eyes on. Go, through, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them of the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded of you, and such I am, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So he wants us to teach them right so there's different kinds of missionaries and we have a Gideon minister here today so I'm going to ask y'all this week if y'all take time to pray for the Gideons and next week we're going to talk about missionaries again and I'm going to give you a missionary to pray for next week when I come back okay um, would you go get Miss Shirley for me Appreciate Miss Shirley volunteering. Now, what do we want to tell Miss Shirley? God loves you, Miss Shirley. 
and we love Miss Shirley too. Uh, let us pray. Father God, you can teach us things in so many ways. But we have missionaries, Lord, who, who go out and do your work. And Lord, if, if we're not missionaries, we can pray for our missionaries. We pray for our Gideons who put our Bibles out there for people to learn about you, Lord. They print it out in so many different um, countries and so many different languages so that people can see and know your word, Lord. And we thank you for them. And we thank you for our other minist ministries and, and men that minister in other countries and do other mission work. Thank you, Lord, for our children. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. Thank you. Give our kids a big hand. Thank you, Tammy. <clears throat> Thank you, kids. Thank you, Miss Shirley. We're glad you came back so you can know that God loves you. Yes. Thank you, Trey, for saying that. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, it's time for us to do our prayer time. And uh, I've got my, my big prayer list that I'm going to place on the altar again. And every person and every situation is just as important. These are some of the, the most recent uh, ones I have. Um, so I'm not saying these are more important than, but these are the ones that I'll be calling out today, and you'll have your opportunity to call them out. Um, my son's got a lady that he worked with years ago that her little grandboy has... What did he have? Cancer? Leukemia? Leukemia. And his name is Brendan, B-R-E-N-D-E-N, -E Gillespie. So if you would remember them in your prayers, please. We do want to pray for our Gideons. Is it just Gideons or Gideons International? International. Gideons International. And also our speaker, again, you'll hear more about him in a moment, but Jeff Ferris and uh, his... He said, she said his daughter was with him, but uh, it's his mom. Uh, she's with him, and we'll pray for them this morning as they come to worship with us today. Uh, we've already lifted up and talked about little Allie, Di Diana Lawford, but would you remember her in your prayers? Um, we want to pray for Vernon Williams, David and, T and Terry Vaughn, Bud Lightsey, Ray Mayers, Ray Johnson, Winifred Phillips, Willowy Sapp, Claude Bird, Samantha Griffin and baby girl Noah, uh, Eugene Talmadge Rents, Wayne Vandiver, Jasmine Flores, Cham Williams, Henry and Marianne Bowers, Ron Townley, and Craig Smith. And uh, your uh, Minshew, what's her first name? Meg Minshew needs to be lifted up. She's a recent uh, concern. Now, again, I know that there's many more. God loves to hear your voice as well. I place this on the altar for the rest of my prayer list. And always remember the least, the lost, the lonely, those who grieve, and caregivers. Let us pray. Oh God, we come and we give you thanks for this day, for the opportunity to be together in worship, to gather together our spirits, our hearts, and our minds during this time of the service, uh, to pray and to, first of all, to come to you and tell you we love you, we praise you, worship, and adore you. We thank you for Jesus. Who, who gives us life and life abundant. We thank you for eternal life. We thank you for your grace, your mercy, and your love. And so, Lord, we thank you that you've made a way for us when Jesus died on the cross and the veil was torn in two, that we can go straight to your throne of mercy. And so, Lord, we come as needy people. We come praising you and blessing you and, and loving you. But, Lord, we are needy, and we know that you're the great physician. You're the one who cares for us. You're the one that's our, our creator. 
the one who's designed us and, and loves us. And so, Lord, we come to you on behalf of others. You've heard the names and others that I've lifted up. Uh, would you hear others now as we call them out to you? What an awesome and good God you are. We praise you, Lord. We thank you for hearing our prayers. Lord, we're so grateful for the blessings that you give to each and every one of us. We're such a blessed people, a blessed community, and a blessed nation. For those who are less fortunate than us, Lord, uh, our, our friend Reverend Isaac in Uganda has shared with me about the measles breakout with people there and that they are afraid and don't understand. They believe it's evil, so they're not even want to go to a hospital and get treated. So, Lord, we pray for the people there. We pray for children all around the world. For those who need love, those who need uh, all kind of care this morning, God, we pray, Lord, that you would uh, put good people in their path. We thank you for our schools here. We thank you for our teachers, for all those who serve here in our community. We thank you, Lord, for our, our police and sheriff's department. We thank you for all those who govern our community and for the churches that are here, we pray, God, that that your spirit would be very strong here in this community and that great things would come about because of your holy presence. We thank you, Lord, that, that you continue to work around the world. And we have heard through Tammy this morning, through the children's time, about missionaries. And we're grateful, God, that there are missionaries, people who are willing to hear the call to go into places where nobody else will go. Go to places that uh, need to hear of your word, to experience your love and your grace, and um, keep them from all harm. We do thank you for the Gideons, Gideons International. Lord, we know they're local folks, uh, but they, they give and they send around the world. They, they give to our school children. They give to uh, places around the world, like Tammy said, in different languages. And, and Lord, uh, we're so blessed to have uh, Jeff here with us today. And we pray, God, that you use him in a way that that he would be even uh, excited himself that he is saying and doing the things he will be doing. Lord, fill him with your spirit, but also open our ears that we might hear. Oh yeah, we've heard Gideon's and Gideon stories, but may this be a new and a fresh today. To be reminded that your word is all powerful, and God, that we need people to be willing to tell, to share, and to give. So, Lord, we pray now that uh, as you listen to us and you hear our prayers and you hear our hearts, that you uh, continue to connect with us in this place today and that we might love you more and love each other more. We pray, God, as we uh, are in that relationship with you, that our relationship with each other will be greater as well. So draw us to you and to each other. And as we're drawn to each other, may we come together to pray the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our offertory hymn is found on page 338 in your hymnal. If you will, please stand as we sing our offertory hymn, Where He Leads Me. It'll also be on the cross. service um, to the Gideons, you can make your check out uh, to the church and then put to the Gideons, and we'll have somebody at both doors that will be taking up that offering at the end of the service. That would make it a lot easier than if you put it in the offering plate at this time. So I hope I didn't confuse that. Don't, don't put it in the offering plate. If you're going to do cash or check, just wait till the service is at the end and then when you go out, okay? If you're going to do that for us. Let's pray. God, we thank you, Lord, that we can give, and we can give to your church, 
Your church is First United Methodist. It's the church universal. It's the church around the world. It's the church with the Gideons in doing their mission work. Lord, it's our way of giving to you and fulfilling our call, our command for the Great Commission to go forth into all the world and to tell people about you. So, Lord, as we give this morning, may we give from our hearts. May we prayerfully give that we uh, honor you and bring glory to you and that we are about your kingdom business. So, Lord, bless the gift and the giver. In the name of Jesus, we make this prayer. Amen.
Well, it's good to have Mr. Jeff Ferris with us today. As uh, I don't have to call his name. You've seen it up there. You've heard Brother uh, Steve mention it several times, and we're just happy to have him with us. Uh, he has uh, been a Gideon now for 20 years, uh, approximately, and uh, he has the position in, in the Gideon's camp here in Batchley of, of placing pastors uh, the speakers in the churches where they're going to be speaking like he is today. We have some 43 to 45 churches in our community that participate in uh, much like we're doing here today. And it's not an easy task to find pastors uh, from within the camp outside the camp in other towns and get them to come and get them situated in, in churches. Next Sunday we'll have about 20 people to come into the churches in Appling County and the following Sunday we'll have about 10. So it, he's responsible for getting those pastors in those churches. And we appreciate the job that he does. He not only assigns those but he speaks also and is a real asset to our camp. Jeff has been retired now for five years, so that gives him more time to do such as that, you know. And, uh, but before he retired, he was the chief ranger out of our forestry unit, and uh, he was there for some 25 years. He worked many times in the school system. He worked with the FFA and 4-H clubs and uh, just did a lot of community service that he really didn't have to do. We appreciate his work. Jeff is married to Debbie Ferris. Most of you, uh, or many of you know Debbie, and uh, she has uh, a jail ministry of her own as part of the Gideon's uh, Auxiliary. So we appreciate not only Jeff, but we appreciate Debbie and what she does. They have three children. They have Carrie and Scotty and Jenny. They have four children, and they have six grand, grand uh, excuse me, four, what? Jeff has four grandchildren, and then he has six great-grandchildren. So hats off to him. Uh, so we're, we're extremely uh, appreciative of Jeff taking the time away from what all he does with the Gideons to himself come and, and speak in our church. And as you know, we all have our likes and our dislikes, and uh, you never know it, but he sure doesn't like to shave. <laughs> mind shaving. I just lost my razor. <laughs> I can't go on like this. Everything's terrible. My wife's left me, took the kids. My job's gone. And nobody cares. It's horrible. And I want to die. I want to die. Oh my, I want to die. You don't want to do this, my son. Don't you know I love you? That when you hurt, I hurt with you. And I have prepared a place for you to go. Where you can be sitting quiet and relax and know that I am your God. A little over a hundred years ago, the good Lord gave a message to three men. He wanted a new ministry started with a simple goal of putting one copy of his living word in every hotel and motel in these United States. Here we sit a little over 100 years later in over 200 countries and territories worldwide still doing the same work God started a little over 100 years ago. <clears throat> the ministry is made up of business and professional men who come from churches much like this one. As y'all noticed this morning, you have several Gideons in the church. Today we place a copy of God's living word, or try to, 
in every hotel and motel room in this country. A hundred years ago, the plan was to put one in each motel. And if somebody needed to borrow it, they could go down to the lobby and check it out like a library book. Now we try to have one in every room in every hotel and motel plus. We try to give one to every fifth grader in these United States. Every fifth grader that schools will allow us in. Look familiar? They told us then, inside the place, put your name. You want to see what my handwriting looked like when I was in the fifth grade? Gideons came to Fortune Grammar School in Lafette, Georgia. I figured the date, it must have been right around 1974. And this is what they handed me. Folks, if you take care of them, they'll last you a long time. I said in every school they'll allow us in. A few years ago, we were not allowed in Ware County schools. Today, I'm tickled to say we are back in them. However, Long County at present will not allow us in their schools. We pass them out to graduate nurses. Y'all have all seen the little white copies. These are the nurses' copies. We pass them out to our military. They're camouflage. You've never seen those. We pass them out to our local law enforcement, to our local fire department personnel, our volunteers, our rescue personnel, the EMTs. Give everybody a copy that wishes one. We distribute them at the fairs. We distribute them at anywhere three people or more gather. You can probably find a Gideon handing out a Bible. If y'all go to the Onion Festival in Vidalia, you'll find Gideons. If you go to Swainsboro's, whatever Swainsboro was celebrating, Blueberry Festival, you'll find Gideons passing out Bibles. We pass them out in lawyers' offices for obvious reasons. <laughs> Folks need a lawyer, they generally got a problem, don't they? We pass them out in our prisons. He talked about the prison ministry. We are actually allowed to pass out Bibles in the prison. And I'm talking about the sheriff's jail. We pass them out at the penitentiary, the state prison, further down the road. We go about four times a year. We figure we have a rotation in there about every three or four months. So we go every three or four months and pass out to those who have come in and doesn't have one. We pass them out at our hospitals. I'm sorry to say that all our major hospitals in Atlanta, Georgia, will not let Gideons put a Bible in them. The world we live in today. We put them out at our battered women's clinics. And we put them at our abortion clinics with the prayers that they save more than just lives. Because I'm thinking nowhere is a greater need. I want to die. I guess I should go somewhere and write out why I want to do this, explain to my wife and children why I want to die. I'll go to a motel. Don't ask me why. You figure it out for yourself. Somebody wants to die, the first thing they do is go check out a room at a motel. I need something to write on. Let me look in the desk. There's bound to be a paper and pencil. What is this? A Bible? I don't like this. These fly across the room really well, bounce off walls. God doesn't love me. He wouldn't let me be in this mess. I'll lay down and think. While our citizen is laying in the bed thinking why they want to die, how they're going to kill themselves, and possibly hearing a wee little voice in their ear whispering, Pick me up and read me. 
I don't want you dead. I have wondrous things for you. Pick me up and read me. Pick you up? I can't stand you. Frequently jump out of the bed. Go over to it, try to kick it under the bed. Y'all ever stay at a motel or hotel these days? They're strictly designed with a piece of plywood running about six inches under the edge of the bed. You can't stick anything under the bed. Kick a Bible under it. What do you think happens? It bounces back out, generally opened. Now, I'm not going to stand here and try to tell you which book, which chapter, or which verse it's open to. Because y'all know as well as I do, God talks to each one of us personally through different books, through different chapters, through different verses. And they lay back in the bed and start thinking about dying again. And that sweet little voice is still whispering, pick me up, read me. What is our goal as a church, as Christians, as Gideons? Salvation, right? That is our number one priority, finding the lost and lead them back. Well, maybe it won't hurt if I read a little bit. Now, I'm not going to stand here and tell y'all that everybody who picks that book up and reads it gets saved immediately. That's not even realistic, is it? Most of the time, however, they will get up, they will read God's Word, they will decide death is not the answer, and they will walk out starting down the road to salvation. Now they frequently take this book with them. What is that called in these United States? Theft by taking, right? No. It's called victory. For what was our goal in putting that book there? Save them. To put the Word of God in a lost soul's hands and then let God take over. And He does. As a Gideon, I have the privilege every month to get in a magazine and every month they print these testimonies. The one I just did is not a single testimony. It's a conglomerate of many testimonies that I have read over the years. It's basically the same story. Somebody in a church, like y'all, gave a Gideon like me some money, as God told them to. I took it and sent it to Nationals to buy books. Understand this. Every penny donated to Gideon's International goes for the purchase and distribution of Bibles. What that means is we order them, that be printed, and then we have to pay the U.S. Postal Service to bring them to us. That's where the money goes. The rest of it's on our own. I don't know, lost my train of thought. That's fun. Anyhow. Ah. Uh, Theft. We call it victory. Every one they carry out costs approximately five dollars. I've got plenty more. They carry that one out, we'll put another one right back in its place. Somebody like you paid for it, somebody like me put it in the building. Who gets the glory? God. We are all just pencils in the hand of the great writer as he writes out the world's history. We just do our part. One copy, one copy of God's living word put in a motel has an average lifespan of about five years with a possibility of reaching out to up to 2,300 readers. Five dollars. The little ones we pass out, what do y'all think these cost these days? 
somewhere between a dollar and a quarter and a dollar thirty-five each. We passed them out as hard as we go. In the last hundred years, Gideon worldwide have passed out over two billion copies of God's living word. So what's important about the Bible itself? Why do we impress upon it? What does God say about his living word? John 1.1 1, 1 says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word is God. Acts 9 20 says, So mighty grew the word of God and multiplied. 1 Peter 1 25, But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. This is the word we worship and study every week, isn't it? Acts 10.44, while Peter yet spoke these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them which had heard the word. He talks to us. Psalm 68.11, the Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those that published it. Isaiah 48, the grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of God shall stand forever. Acts 6, 4. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministering of the word. And Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. How important is our Bible? God said it's very important. And we're to read it every chance we get and study it. During the times of the disciples out preaching they would preach the message or read the word and then actually had folks who would go out to the crowd and make sure everybody understood what was being talked about it's important we not only know what the word says but understand it but let me tell you another testimony about a gentleman named Joe now Joe was a good man he had a child, he had a son, he was a good father, good husband, hard-working, what we would call a good man. Joe only had one little problem. He knew of the Lord, but he didn't know the Lord. Now Joe had a job where every day he got off work about 2 o'clock, and Joe being the good daddy he was, would maybe stop at the store and buy a Coke or something for his son, then go to the schoolhouse and wait for little Joe to get out of school. And he'd pick him up and take him home. Or take him fishing. Or take him to a ball game. Or do what good daddies and good sons do together. Well, one day he went to pick little Joe up. And little Joe was all excited. He come up, Daddy, Daddy, look what I got. They gave it to me at school today. And his daddy says, that's a Bible. The Gideon's been there. I got one when I was in fifth grade. You all go fishing? The kid said, yeah. And he tossed it on the dash of the truck. And didn't think any more about it. So every day, Joe would go to work early in the morning, get off at 2 o'clock, go to the schoolhouse and sit in the parking lot with the Word of God in the confines of a pickup truck. Can you imagine daily sitting there with God staring you in the face? What happened? Joe will tell you real quick, mainly out of boredom, he picked it up and started reading it. Now Joe was a good man. There were no major earthquake changes in Joe's life. Folks really didn't start to notice, but his wife did. She was a good woman. She had her Bible when she was in fifth grade. She noticed Joe started talking about the Lord and church and things Joe had never spoke of before. And it wasn't long before Joe led his child and his wife to church and to the Lord through the works of the Lord. And how did the Lord do it again? Let's go over it again. Church member gave money, Gideon ordered a book, gave it to a kid who in turn threw it on the dash of a truck. 
Does anybody in here honestly believe all that was accidental? This is how the Gideons do the Lord's work for him. We present them and walk off. I'm here today to report on how the Gideon moving through the outreach program of this church in Appling County. In Appling County, we're still invited back in the schools. We're still in all the hospitals. We're at the prison. We're at the jail. Law enforcement. Peaches to beaches. I'm not sure. I'm a little bit behind, but I know in years past we've been at the big buck contest. Opening day of dove season. What else have we been doing? Uh, we're at the Georgia Baptist Children's Home on a regular basis. This is where the money's being spent in Appling County. How can you help? First and foremost, we need prayers. Gideon's International are growing around the world, but they're drying up in the United States. I've been retired five years, and I'm one of the youngest members in Appling County Count. And speakers are getting harder and harder to find. When I first started doing the job three years ago, I could write a count and ask for four or five speakers, and they'd, oh yeah, no problem. Last year I had one flat tell me we had three speakers, two died and one can't drive anymore. We need young blood. Young being anybody under 100. We need prayers. What's the Bible say about praying? The fervent, help me out, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. We need prayers. Second, as I said, we need members. We need more folks to help carry the load. It's not a real heavy load. And if you wish to be a member, please don't think you have to get up in front of a church and speak. You all know the different parts of the God's body works different jobs. This is just one part of it. Most Gideons never speak. Most of them do the legwork, setting up speaking, taking care of getting distribution done, getting the Bibles passed out. We need more Gideons. And third, of course, as I've spoken, we need finances. We've got to have the money to buy the Bibles to send them out. Now, the next part of my speech was written last year, and it has changed tremendously, and it's something I wish to bring up. Last year, worldwide, the Gideons were 8 million copies of God's Word short of the world's needs. We are the, one of the richest countries in the world. They depend on us for help. A lot of the countries can't afford anything. So they asked us for help. And last year, we were 8 million copies short. This year, we're no longer short. Thanks to folks like y'all. We covered the request brought in and the 8 million we were shy last year. That is God at work. Uh, at the end, me and Brother Jimmy will be standing somewhere. Y'all put in whatever y'all feel the Lord leads you to put in. We are a missionary outreach program of your church. But we don't want anybody to do anything they don't feel the Lord leads them to do. One more quick story. Uh, this is my overseas story. This was put into magazine by some Americans who had the job of flying around the world delivering cases of Bibles. And they got into Africa near the mountainous area, landed the plane, and sat there waiting a little bit. And here come a gentleman and his donkey to pick up some Bibles, one case, all he needed, and take back up to his village. Now he only lived three days travel by donkey down to the airport from his village on top of the mountain. And he got down there, he seemed a little antsy, seemed a little anxious. And of course, the Americans, you know, we're relaxed. We have a good time. We want to learn and know everybody. Come on and eat with us. He said, I got to hurry. I got to go. I said, well, well, can't you spend a few minutes? He said, no, I got to go. 
They said, what is your hurry? He said, my wife's died. She's on her deathbed as we speak. This is the fourth time I've been here. And the first three times, there were no Bibles to be given away. They had run out. And my village has no Bibles. And my wife and I discussed it, and she encouraged me, you go get those Bibles. You bring them back to my friends, my family. You see to it that they know about God and His Word. If the Lord's kind, and He is, and if it's His will, I'll still be here when you get back. And if I'm not, you know where I'll be. You can join me later. He said, I got to go. And off he went. Three days journey by mule back up the mountain to his family. This is the strength of the word that we're talking about. And in America, if you want a Bible, you can go to Dollar Tree and buy them for a buck. They got piles of them. As a Gideon passing them out, I have seen children break. I've got six copies of it. You ever read one? Yeah. I've also seen children say, I've got one. Give that one to somebody who doesn't have one. In Applin County. Folks, we're doing good in Applin. I did see a young man one time at our back to school program. Now don't ask me to explain this. When you get the young ladies up there, you say, You're, you look healthy. So thank you. You strong? I'm pretty strong. Are you strong enough to carry that to Applin County High School and let your friends see you with it? How do you think the young ladies respond? Yeah, I got mine. 17 year old linebacker for the football team. Oh, thank you. I tried to talk to one one time. I handed him the Bible. I said, you strong enough to carry that? Let he said, I ain't got time, I gotta play football. I said, Mr. White played for the Packers. He's got a Super Bowl ring. He's a preacher. He said, I don't care. And he literally ran across the parking lot to get away from me. I still believe to this day God was already talking to him or I wouldn't have scared him so bad. <laughs> don't ask me why. The young ladies are far less ashamed of being seen with that than our young males. I will give you one more quick story and I'll shut up. In Applin County some years ago, I know, I just can't shut up. Some years ago, one of our Gideons who was doing the uh, motel ministry walked in with a copy of the Bible. He said, I want y'all to read this. There was a note in it in the back. It says, me and my wife are from Waycross, Georgia. And we decided we could not stand each other any longer. We're getting a divorce. So we came to Baxley, Georgia to a motel room, fancy that. We were gonna sit down and divide our family. Kids, car, house. I don't even have the car and house, you ain't getting my kids. We're gonna divide the family. And while we was there, she was rambling in the desk, caught a pencil, and guess what she found? God's living word. And she picked it up. And they started reading it. Now I can't tell you what became of that family because we never know. But we do know that they wrote in that Bible, thanks to the, that Bible being there, thanks to God for putting it there, they have decided instead of divorce, they would try to pursue God and pursue each other and keep that family together. Now the Bible tells us you don't need the Bible to learn about God. First Peter talks about how a woman can lead her husband to God. But if both of them don't know God, what's the next alternative? One or two choices. You, the living Bible, and God's living word. Brother Steve, I want to thank you for allowing us to get in this morning.
It is a great honor and pleasure to be here, and I want to thank all y'all for being attentive. I don't think I put a single person to sleep this morning, which is doing really good for me. Thank y'all. sing. We're going to sing. He touched me, I believe. And that wasn't Jeff that touched him. Now, I will say this about Jeff. Since he's the guy that picks people to come and speak, I'm glad he picked himself to speak here. You did a great job. Thank you, brother. Appreciate that. And I can say he's the real deal. You know why that? Because he said he's from Lafayette, Georgia. Not Lafayette, because if he was from Lafayette, Georgia, he wouldn't say Lafayette. They're, they say it Lafayette, right? There you go. Because we were looking for a rock town. You know where rock town is? Well, it's called rock town. It's a cliffs and rocks and boulders and all. And we were looking for it, and we said, uh, uh, is that in Lafayette, Georgia? They said, no, it's called Lafayette, Georgia. So if you're from there, you know what you're talking about. So so you the real deal, brother. you the real deal. So thank you very much. Let's stand. And uh, Jimmy and, and uh, Chelsea and whoever else this guy is over here, uh, Tripp, is going to lead us in. He touched me. And and uh, be praying if the Lord has touched you. Uh, you've heard these stories before, but just remind it again how God's living word uh, touches people right here in our community and around the world. I love Isaiah 48. The grass withers, the flower falls, but the word of God stands forever. Stands forever. It's the word of God that makes a difference. And uh, that's what the Gideons are doing. If the Lord has touched you and at the end of this service, there'll be someone at that door and this door. You just place it in. They probably have a basket or a Bible or something usually. And uh, if you're writing a check again to the church, put down for Gideons. Cash, lay it right there. Okay. If you forgot and uh, you want to give, you can do that later. And uh, bless you. Praise the Lord and let's sing. Okay, so they're wanting the ushers to do that. Uh, okay, and then y'all do this one. Okay, very good. Let's sing.
benediction. Shalom to you. God, that it, it does touch us and it moves us and stirs us. Lord, it reaches around the world to all people. We thank you for Jeff and for Gideon's International. We pray, your Lord, a blessing upon it today. We pray, Lord, for the days ahead and the years ahead as they continue to, to share your word. Now, Lord, bless our church. Bless those who will give for the Gideons today. That is, the gifts are given in these places of offering that they would be used for your glory and your glory and honor. For it's in the name of Jesus we make this prayer. Amen. Amen.